Ali Kojia and the Merchant of Baghdad Short Stories for Kids Over a thousand years ago, in the reign of the famous Caliph Haroun al-Raskid, there lived in Baghdad a merchant, Ali Kojia, who needed to travel on an extended journey. He sold nearly all of his household goods and rented out his home. The only thing left for him to do was to find a safe place to leave his private treasure, 1,000 pieces of gold. Finally, he decided to put the 1,000 pieces of gold into a large jar and cover the gold with olives. When he had closed the mouth of the jar, he carried it to a friend of his, who was also a merchant, and said to him, You know, my friend, that in a few days I plan to depart on my journey. I beg you to take charge of a jar of olives, and keep it for me till I return. The merchant promised that he would, and in an obliging manner said, Here, take the key of my warehouse and set your jar where you please. I promise you shall find it there when you return. Ali Kojia's journey was extended much longer than he expected. In fact, he was seven years absent from Baghdad, when he finally decided to return. All this time his friend, with whom he had left his jar of olives, neither thought of him nor of the jar. One evening this merchant was supping with his family and the conversation happened to fall upon olives. The merchant's wife mentioned that she had not tasted any for a long while. Now that you speak of olives, said the merchant, you remind me of a jar that Ali Kojia left with me seven years ago. He put it in my warehouse to be kept for him until he returned. What has become of him I know not, though when the caravan came back, they told me he had gone to Egypt. Certainly he must be dead by now, since he has not returned in all this time, and we may go ahead and eat the olives, if they are still good. Give me a plate and a candle. I will fetch some of them and will taste them. Please, husband, said the wife, do not commit so base an action, you know that nothing is more sacred than what is committed to one's care and trust. Besides, do you think the olives can be good, after they've been kept so long? They must be all moldy and spoiled. Besides, if Ali Kojia should return and find that they had been opened, what would he think of your honor? I beg of you to let them alone. Nevertheless, after supper, the merchant entered the warehouse, found the jar, opened it and found the olives moldy. But to see if they were all in the same condition to the bottom, he shook the jar and some of the gold pieces tumbled out. The merchant noticed at once that the top only was laid with olives, and what remained was gold coin. He immediately put the olives into the jar again, covered it up, and returned to his wife. Indeed, wife, said he, you were in the right to say that the olives were all moldy for I found them so, and have made up the jar just as Ali Kojia left it. He will not notice that they had been touched, if he should ever return. In the days ahead the merchant thought only about how he might appropriate Ali Kojia's gold to his own use, and yet escape detection in case his old friend should return and ask for the jar. The next morning the merchant went and bought some olives of that year, and then secretly went and emptied the jar both of the old moldy olives and of the gold. Then, filling the jar entirely with new olives, he covered it up and put it in the place where Ali Kojia had left it. About a month later, Ali Kojia arrived at Baghdad. The next morning he went to pay a visit to his friend, the merchant, who expressed great joy at his return after so many years absence. After the usual compliments on both sides on such a meeting, 
Ali Kojia asked the merchant to return him the jar of olives which he had left with him, and thanked him for having kept the jar safely for all this time. My dear friend, replied the merchant, your jar has been no inconvenience. There is the key of my warehouse. Go and fetch your jar, you will find it where you left it. Ali Kojia went into the merchant's warehouse, took his jar, and after having returned the key, and thanking his friend once again for the favor, he returned with the jar to where he was temporarily lodged. But on opening the jar, and putting his hand down as low as the pieces of gold had lain, he was greatly surprised to find no gold pieces in the jar. At first he thought he might perhaps be mistaken, and to discover the truth, he poured out all the olives, but without so much as finding one single piece of gold. For some time, he stood motionless. Then he cried out, is it possible? Ali Kojia immediately returned to the merchant. My good friend, said he, be not surprised to see me come back so soon. I know that the jar of olives is the same one I placed in your warehouse, but with the olives I put into the jar a thousand pieces of gold, which I do not find. Perhaps you might have used them in your business, if so, they are at your service till it may be convenient for you to return them. Only give me an acknowledgement of my loan to you, after which you may repay me at your own convenience. The merchant, who had expected that Ali Kojia would come with such a complaint, was prepared with an answer. Friend Ali Kojia, said he, when you brought your jar to me, did I touch it? Did I not give you the key of my warehouse? Did you not carry it there yourself? And did you not find it in the same place, covered in the same manner as when you left it? And now that you have come back, you demand one thousand pieces of gold. Did you ever tell me such a sum was in the jar? I wonder you do not demand diamonds or pearls. It is easy enough for you to storm into my house, make a crazy accusation, insult me, and tarnish my good name. Be gone. These words were pronounced in such passion that those in the warehouse started to gather around. Neighboring merchants came out of their shops to learn what the dispute was about. Ali Kojia shared with one and all the injustice done to him by the merchant, and the merchant continued to hotly deny any wrongdoing. Ali Kojia speedily summoned the merchant to court. To the judge, Ali Kojia accused the merchant of having stolen his thousand pieces of gold, which he had left with him. The judge asked him if he had any witnesses, to which he replied that he had not taken that precaution because he had believed the person he entrusted his money with to be his friend, and always took him for an honest man. Then the merchant made the same defense he had before, saying that though it's true that he had kept Ali Kojia's jar in his warehouse, he had never once meddled with it. The merchant swore that as far as he knew, the jar contained only olives. Once again, he strongly objected that he should be brought to court on the basis of such unfounded accusations. He proposed to make an oath that he never had the money he was accused of taking, and to swear that he did not so much as know such a sum ever existed. The judge agreed to take his oath. After the merchant swore his ignorance of the entire matter, the judge dismissed the case for lack of evidence. Ali Kojia, extremely upset to find that he must accept the loss of so large a sum of money, returned to his lodgings and drew up a petition to seek justice from the Caliph Harun al raskid himself. He forwarded his petition to the officer of the palace, who presented it to the Caliph himself. 
The caliph told the officer to notify Ali Kojia that an hour would be scheduled for the next day for the complaint to be heard at the palace. The officer was also told to notify the merchant to appear. That same evening the caliph, accompanied by the grand vizier, went disguised through the town as it was his custom occasionally to do. On passing through a street, the caliph heard a noise. He came to a gateway through which he saw ten or twelve children playing by moonlight. The caliph heard one of the children say, Let's play courtroom. As the affair of Ali Kojia and the merchant was widely discussed in Baghdad, the children quickly agreed on the part each one was to act.